Okay, so I'm going to do a uh, review for Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown. Um, and uh, this will be full spoilers, because obviously the movie came out in the 90s. So um, I, uh, I rewatched this movie recently, and um, so like before I, I've seen it, and I was never a massive fan of it. Oh, but uh, I always thought it was it was like okay. It wasn't that great. Uh, one of Tarantino's lesser movies. Um, but you know, rewatching it, I really liked it a lot. Um, so I'm not sure how I would you know rank Tarantino's movies. I pretty much like all of them. So, um. But, you know, I'd say I like this more than The Hateful Eight. Hateful Eight, I mean, I like that movie, but, uh, I don't know, I gotta rewatch it. It's, I remember it being kind of long, and, um, not one of my favorites, but, um, I don't know, I gotta rewatch that, because you, you never know. Especially with Tarantino, you go back and you're like, wow, this movie's awesome. So, I rewatched this, and, uh, I don't know, I just was really into it, um... You know, I, I, I know it didn't make as much money back then as they hoped because of Pulp Fiction. Let's see, how much did Pulp Fiction? Wow, yeah, $212 million. $891,000 back then. So what is that now, like three hundred or... 350 or something in a million. Um, but I don't know. I'm, I'm seeing this made 74 million, 700,000. So, you know, it still made money, I think. I don't know what the budget was. Uh, 12 million. Oh, yeah, definitely still made a bunch of money. But I think they were hoping for more, over t over two hundred. Um, but uh, yeah, I really like it. Um, I know this is different because uh, Elmore Leonard is based on Elmore Leonard book, and. Um, You know, usually Tarantino, his movies are just written by him. So, um, but yeah, I mean, the plot's interesting. It's, it, it's basically she's, she's taking money without the... I think it's the ATF knowing about it, and it's got a great cast. Pam Greer, Samuel Jackson, Robert Forrester, Bridget Fonda, Michael Keaton, Robert De Niro. Just a great cast. Based on Rum Punch by Elmore Leonard. Okay, so... Um, So Rum Punch follows Jackie Brown, a 40-year-old stewardess for a bottom-rung airline who has been smuggling illegal cash into the U.S. from Jamaica from a small-time gunrunner and aspiring crime boss, Rodell Robbie. When U.S. agents arrest Jackie after catching her smuggling this dirty money, they use the threat of prison and job loss to pressure her into acting as bait in their plan to catch Rodell. Upon learning of this, Rodell pressures Jackie into intentionally, intentionally misleading and selling the police long enough for her to smuggle the remainder of his retirement score money into the U.S. Hopefully, caught between two between two new scenarios, both dooming her to lifelong poverty. Since she, okay, since she's too old to start over again, and. 
A desperate Jackie devises a secret risky plan for her to own to double cross Ordell and the police, save herself, and secure her future. To execute this plan, just Jackie must enlist the help of Max Cherry. The same bail bondsman Ordell hired to get Jackie out of jail. Luis Garcia, Ordell's long term criminal associate, works for Cherry and becomes involved in the gun running. Okay, is that uh, De Niro's role? Probably. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, it's it, it, great acting. I love how it's shot. Um, so the cinematography is by uh, Guillermo Navarro. Hmm. Oh, so he 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 shoots a lot of uh, Guillermo del Toro stuff. Okay. Oh, he shot Desperado. So there's a connection because Robert Rodriguez and him are good friends, and he's in Desperado, obviously a Tarantino. He's like I think a bartender. So you shot Pacific Rim, Pan's Labyrinth, Hellboy, Spawn, <laughs> The Long Kiss Goodnight, I haven't seen that in so long, From Dust Till Dawn, yeah, Kronos, so a bunch of Del Toro stuff. Hmm. So it's not even his normal cinematographer, or Tarantino, but uh, it's beautifully shot. I really like um, Pam Greer and Robert Forrester scenes together. Uh, it's just um, very likable characters. Um, Robert Forrester is just a great actor. There's just something about him that's just a, just a very uh, kind of like no no BS kind of old school acting seems to me and uh just really enjoyable you know robert de niro this is a different role for him you don't really there's almost no other movie like that he's like this and like you know he's he's an ex-con he's kind of down on his luck um and what he does to bridget fonda in the in the uh parking lot it's just like it seems so crazy where he just shoots her because like he can't find the car and she's making fun of him and um and she wants to double cross samuel L. jackson and, and her and de niro will take the money and de niro's like no way like which is right i mean it's like his friend although he ends samuel L. jackson ends up killing de niro because he's so pissed at him about him killing bridget fonda and also about uh all, like a lot of the money's gone too. Um, it's not really De Niro's fault, but he definitely shouldn't have shot Bridget Fonda. So, but yeah, it's a very this movie's just so watchable. Like once you start watching it, you just you just gotta finish it. Uh, you know, Samuel Jackson said this is his favorite Tarantino movie. I saw that in the trivia on IMDb. I don't know if that's true, but I could see why, because, like, he's in it a lot. And he's got some great scenes. And, and he, he, he almost looks like a, like, he's like a snake. Like, his character's so dark and evil. Like, he's just so ruthless. Um, I mean, he, you know, he kills Robert De Niro, because he's like, he's like, man, like, like, you messed up. And... And he's got this like long tail kind of beard thing. I don't know. He like, I, I like his look. Uh, great, great acting from Samuel Jackson. Um, I really like the scene with Samuel Jackson and uh, uh, Chris Tucker, which you know uh, when I was watching, I was like, oh man, Chris Tucker's in this just for like a ten minutes, fifteen minutes, something, and then Samuel Jackson kills him just like a brutal scene because like the guy gets gets caught uh 
he was drunk driving, I think, and he had he had he's a felon and he had a bunch of uh Samuel Jackson's guns, I think, in his trunk. So any and, and then they're throwing they're saying that he's gonna have to do like 10, 15 years for it. He, like, you know, even with a good lawyer, so and uh Samuel Jackson's like, yeah, he he he's he he will not do that time, so he's gonna talk. So, like, like, uh, I bet the book's pretty good because I, I like how it all intertwines together. Like Samuel Jackson has to has to bail out. Okay, yeah, has to bail out Jackie Brown. Wait, no, no, no. Or does or does he bail out Chris Tucker first? I think he bails out Chris Tucker first. Yeah, he bails out Chris Tucker. And he bails out Chris Tucker, and then later, and then later that night, basically, or a day later, he kills Chris Tucker. In the middle of the night, he convinces him to come out with him to get in the car, because um, he's gonna do like a deal. And he, I mean, total red flags. Like he wants the guy to lay down in the trunk with an with a with a shotgun that has no bullets in it. I mean, it's like, come on, man, that's. Why would you do that? But, but he, you know, he kind of trusts him because he just he just spent like ten thousand dollars to bail him out, and he also saying he's got this good lawyer that that's gonna get him off off what off what he did. So, um, so 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 yeah. So then he kills him, and then Jackie Brown is she just gets off. Uh, she works at a stewardess. She at, 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 um. And she's in, I don't know if she has a felony, but um, she was smuggling you know, for, with her husband, who was a pilot, who's not in the movie, but, um, and she was, like, with Delta or something, and now she's with this, like, really bad airline. I think they go to Cabo, and, uh, and she gets caught with, uh, I think, money and, I think, drugs, too. And by the ATF, who got a tip, by later you assume they don't, they don't really, I'm not sure if they say, but it pretty much assume it was by Chris Tucker. So it's a really nice, it, like the script uh, is very uh, tight, it's very interwoven, I really like that. Um, and, uh, um, and she gets caught by the ATF. One of the guys is Michael Keaton, uh, one of my favorite actors. He, he's just such a good actor, and um, I love the scene with with him and Jackie Brown. But anyway, and he's so they so they catch her. She goes. She has to get bailed out. So he goes back to the bail bondsman, and then uh, the bail bondsman's like, "So whatever happened to uh, Chris Tucker's character?" Because apparently, like, like, like they can't find him, and he's like, he's like, I don't know. And then, and then he's like, okay, fine. So I'll uh, bail out um, Pam Greer. And then he, he he goes through, you know, how much money it's gonna be and everything like that. Um. So yeah, Robert Forrester's Max Cherry. And I think Michael Keaton's character, I think, out of sight is an Elmore Leonard novel, and I think he's in it too, uh, Michael Keaton, so I think, I think it's the same character. But I think this movie's better than Out of Sight, but that, that movie's okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, Ray Nicolette, Out of Sight. So, uh, But yeah, um, you know, I won't go through the whole plot, but uh, the other ATF agent is uh, Michael Bowen. He's a good actor, too. There's really not that many actors, really, in the movie, except for extras, of course, but... Uh... And also, Sid Haig is in it as a judge. R.I.P. Sig, Sig, Sig Haig.
But man, he was in, uh, what is that, Three from Hell? And it's sad, because he's in, like, one scene, and you can tell he's, like, sick, or I don't know. That was sad. Maybe I'll review uh, those three movies from uh, Rob Zombie. But anyways, I always, I've, I've always enjoyed Siddiq Stig as an actor. But he's in like one scene as a judge. But the movie's just, uh, I just like how it's really interwoven. Uh, the script is very, I think a very good script. Very, very tight. Um, so, you know, I know, I know, it, like the, you know, uh, the people who funded them or whatever, uh, the studio was kind of disappointed in the movie. But it's very good. I mean, it's so watchable. Um, even Tom Lister Jr. is in it. Oh, yeah, that man, he died. Yeah, RIP to him, too, man. Heart disease. But he's in Friday, The Fifth Element, The Dark Knight. He's been in a lot of good stuff. Um, Friday's a really good, good movie. But, you know, there's just some really good scenes, like, between Jackie Brown and Samuel L. Jackson. Like, when Samuel L. Jackson goes to her apartment, and she assumes that he's going to kill her. I mean, he may, actually may have, but she stole Robert Forrester's gun. Because uh, he's, you know, he he's her, he's her bail bondsman, and he's like, and, and and you can tell he's got a thing for her, and um, and you know she's she's a beautiful woman. I mean, I mean, you know, um, and she's of course in, you know, classic movies from the seventies and eighties, but uh, um. So she, he's got a thing for her, you know, and, you know, she can tell. And then he's like, hey, you want to go get a drink? And, uh, you know, the dialogue's just so good. I mean, like, Tarantino, man, he's just uh, just a master of dialogue. Like, uh, imagine, like, getting him to, like, help, like, Maybe rewrite a little bit of the Star Wars prequels. <laughs> it's just like, you know, because I mean, you know, I like the Star Wars prequels, but, you know, they have their problems and definitely dialogue's one of them. And uh, just imagine him, like, you know, like kind of rewriting it. But, anyways, um, but yeah, there's just some great scenes like like that when, when, when he goes over to her place and uh he's like turning off the lights like he's so creepy that, that, that's he's very creepy in this movie like very good performance from samuel jackson in fact was this nominated for for anything uh okay robert forrester got Got one. That's it, though, I think. Best actor in a supporting role, Robert Forrester. Yeah, I guess he's the supporting role. Samuel L. Jackson's the lead role. Man, Samuel L. Jackson wasn't even nominated for that. Man, he's so good in it. I think it's one of his best performances. Because the thing with Samuel L. Jackson is, like, I, I feel like sometimes, like, he kind of goes... But this was kind of early in his career, but he kind of goes into, like, a, like a caricature of himself i feel um you know even even in some of tarantino's other stuff um you know like the snakes on a plane kind of thing and i mean even like in die hard three you know a little bit i mean that was early in, that was before this even i think or maybe the same year but uh just a little bit. He kind of goes like like his stuff with um. Uh, as uh, in the MCU, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes it just feel like a little bit of a car caricature of himself, and he's such a good actor. But yeah, but that scene and then he's turning off the lights and it's it's so creepy, 
and, and then she stole the gun from Robert Forrester, but she probably's like, well, it's a risk. He, he could, like, you know, report me, and then I will go back to jail right away. But she's like, but, you know, she thinks he likes, or he, he likes her, and it's obvious. Um, so she has the gun, and, and the next day, Robert Forrester just goes over to her apartment, and is like, uh, yeah, hey, uh, can I can I have that back? <laughs> and he even offers for her to borrow it. But then she takes Samuel Jackson's gun because she puts the gun to him because she's like, well, you know, uh, you're gonna kill me because she already knows that Chris Tucker dis has disappeared. So Samuel Jackson's taking no chances. Um. But in in the end, she outsmarts him, and he goes to the bail bondsman's place with the lights turned out, and then she's like, you know, screams, "Oh, he he's got a gun!" And then and then, and then um, um, Michael Keaton comes out and shoots him. So, but um, yeah, just such a great movie, so watchable. So like well directed, great script. Um, I hope Tarantino keeps making movies after his tenth movie. I was like, come on, man! I mean, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was great, so you're not making bad movies. Like, you know, you should keep going. But, um, I guess we'll see. Maybe he'll take a break for a while and then, and then you know, keep keep going. But he, he he's going to make a movie next about, I think, like, some movie critic from the 70s. It's about, I don't know, it's kind of odd choice, but okay. Probably be good. I mean, basically all of his movies are good. And rewatching this, I was just like, this movie's very good. This is, I mean, it's... Probably one of my favorites of his. Um, you know, probably more than Django, because I like Django, but Django, I was like, you know, the last 25 minutes of that movie, you could cut almost. Like, like that movie's, like, too long. This movie's not. So. Yeah, Jackie Brown play, pays homage to 1970s films, particularly Coffee and Foxy Brown. Yeah, it's the only feature-length film that Tarantino has adapted from another work. Which is why I think some people like don't like this movie as much, because they feel like, you know, it's not quite... 100%, it's not quite as much Tarantino, but... but I don't know, You could, I think you could definitely feel his, you know, his presence, but... Um, you know, Bridget Fonda's great in it. She's got some great scenes with Robert De Niro... Um, and then unfortunately he kills her because yeah, he's, you know, he's, he, he, he's a bank robber. You probably assume he's killed people before and she's like making fun of him cause he can't find the car. She's already kind of pissed at him cause he won't steal just Samuel L. Jackson's money. Um, so. Oh, Quentin Tarantino has voice on answering machine. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> but um trying to find so some trivia Oh, Pam Gurr didn't expect her longtime friend Sig Haig to play the role of the judge. She burst out laughing as she was surprised by Haig, since they had starred together in several exploitation films by which this film style was influenced. Wow, so they, they were old friends. Robert Forrester's father, whom he loved dearly, got the news of his son's return to acting in a feature film and spent a short time on set. Sadly, he passed away before Robert Forrester received his Oscar nomination. 
Robert Forrester didn't even have an agent when Quentin Tarantino handed him the script. Forrester had auditioned for the Lawrence Tierney part in Reservoir Dogs. Who's that? Oh, that's that. That's the uh, guy who runs the thing. That old bald guy. No, nah, that guy is perfect for that role. He's like, let's go to war. Yeah, Michael Keaton reprised his role in Out of Sight, based on Elmore Leonard. Quentin Tarantino was afraid that Elmore Leonard would hate the film. He and Roger Avery hesitated to discuss the changes with Leonard, finally speaking with Leonard as the film was about to start shooting. Leonard loved the screenplay, considered it not only the best of the 26 screen adaptions of his novels and short stories, but also stating that it was possibly the best screenplay he had ever read. Wow. 26 screen adaptions. That's crazy. <laughs> the white 1980 Honda Civic, which Jackie Graham Greer drives, the same car Butch Bruce Willis was driving when he knocked down Marcellus Wallace in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> wow. Given how badly Butch crashed after knocking down Marcellus, it's nothing short of amazing that the car wasn't a write-off. <laughs> yeah. Quentin Tarantino was upset that Pram Gear didn't receive an Oscar nomination for Best Actress. Yeah, I agree, she's great. I mean, her and at least Samuel Jackson, I think, deserve a nomination for that, but I don't know. You gotta look at the year, but... The Max Cherry Bail Bonds op was a real Bail Bonds office in Carson, California. It was demolished in 2008. Quentin Tarantino is considered Jackie Brown as his first professional directing experience. Sylvester Stallone originally wanted to play Lewis, while John Travolta was the first choice to play Ray Nicolette. Oh, I wonder why he turned that down. Why would you turn that down? But wow, that would have been in him. Him as Lewis, so him as uh, the De Niro role, that could have been cool. I mean, you know, De Niro's great too. But De Niro and Quentin Tarantino reportedly did not get along on set. This probably had something to do with De Niro not being given to do much by Tarantino regarding playing Louis Gara, who said very little, intended to mumble in his early scenes, but gradually came out of himself as the film progressed. I think he's great. So, I don't know, some of this is interesting, this, this trivia, but, uh... Quentin Tarantino's list for Max Cherry was Paul Newman, Gene Hackman, John Saxton, and Robert Forrester. Well, I think Robert Forrester's perfect. But, uh, I don't know, I... I I guess that's about it just uh i really enjoy the movie um if you haven't seen it you should check it out although i just kind of went through the whole plot so but uh if you do enjoy the movie uh, let me know why um when you when you first saw it what, what you think of it and uh especially what what you think about the uh, casting but uh i think that uh, that's about it uh don't forget to like comment subscribe that's it.